Good day folks, Miguel here. I'm enjoying a beautiful day outside and I've had some uh, thoughts going on in my head and some feelings that I wanted to share uh, about this controversial discussion. Is the earth a globe or is the earth flat? So I wanted to touch on a couple of very, very important things in regards to determining what is real versus what is not real, what is observable versus what is not observable, what is true versus what is false. So in regards to a debate, two opposing sides come together with their opposing arguments and they each side whether it's the globe or the flat earth offers their arguments to support their case and normally in this reality uh, in deciding who is the victor of the arg argument uh, the party or the side that has the most compelling evidence that has the most credible argument is the one that wins correct or not so what is a credible argument? What is a, uh, a valid argument? What consists of a valid argument? Well, what consists of a credible argument is uh, one that is based on facts. And what is facts is what is plain as day obvious, what you can witness and observe yourself, what is verified. Um, and uh, what is not credible, what is not a valid argument is offering wild theories and speculation <clears throat> uh, beliefs that aren't founded on factual data or observable science uh, even the person himself herself who is presenting the data can be not credible so someone that is proven to be a liar you know previously multiple times well, already, when they already come to the table, that person has already lost credibility because they've proven time and time again to be a liar. You know, someone that has um, no experience in something, in a topic, let's say, you know, uh, I want to talk about brain surgery, and I'm not a brain surgeon, so already I've lost my credibility because I'm talking about a topic I have no clue about, I have no experience in. So, these are... Uh, examples of what is not a credible argument versus what is credible, what is real, what is true, what is factual. Now in regards to determining what is truth, uh, we have what is called the scientific method. And the scientific method is a great tool of deciphering this reality, what is true versus what is false, of gauging uh, how things work, why things work, what things are. Um, so in order to determine that the shape of the earth is the is the the big question the big argument and and by the way if you think it's not an argument you're you're entirely wrong globe defenders so the fact that there are millions of flat earthers out now people that have awakened to the flat earth truth is already um, evidence that this is this is actually a discussion we are talking about this because there is actually an argument, valid argument on the table with factual data and evidence to support the flat earth. Now the globe earth has, you know, some, some substance. There's certain things about it that do make sense. Obviously, uh, they have engineered it that way. But Mark, make no mistake, not one person has come to the table in this whole argument with observable evidence of things like space, uh, axial rotation of the earth, things like motion, 66.6 uh, thousand miles per hour has not been proven, N neither has it been felt, neither has it been seen, things like planets and stars being millions and trillions of miles away or light years away, no one has observed this, things like gravity, no one has observed or measured or calculated this. Uh, what we have is numbers drawn on a piece of paper on a chalkboard. What we have is hearsay. What we have is photo images, inauthentic photo images. So what we have is CGI renderings. 
uh, Photoshop, uh, GoPro Fish Islands. All of this is hearsay. All of this is is manufactured evidence. It's not real evidence. Real evidence is what we can test, verify, demonstrate, all right, replicate and observe with our own eyes and feel with our own sensory organs, right? So I'm sitting here now and I feel no motion of the earth, allegedly traveling at 66,000 miles per hour, allegedly hurling around the sun that is also simultaneously traveling at 450,000 miles per hour. Ridiculous, ludicrous speeds. And we don't feel a thing. So they obviously made up a, a theory of gravity to counter that, the conservation of momentum, right? We're, we're inside uh, uh, a closed area space so that you don't feel that stuff because you know, when you're in an airplane, you know, I can walk up and down the aisles and I don't spill my drink because I'm inside of an airplane or I'm in my car, I don't feel the motion. Well, guess what? That car and that airplane has a barrier on top that separates you from the, the, the pressurized environment, from the non-pressurized environment, from the, the vacuum of space, uh, from the atmosphere, the gaseous body. So even if the Earth was a globe, you'd have to have a firmament barrier of some sort to, to demonstrate the difference between a non-pressurized atmosphere and a pressurized atmosphere, right? When you're looking at a tire, there's a pressurized versus a non-pressurized on the outside. So something has got to separate those two. So this is what I'm talking about, about observable evidence. So I want to bring your attention here to this situation we have here, which is a water fountain. We've got us a globe and we got us a flat plane. So water is my number one go-to evidence for my argument remember we're in an argument here so it is you versus me it is your theories theoretical jargon versus observable evidence so water let's let's go over some facts about water water seeks to find its level and no matter what container it rests inside of however water also takes the form of whatever container either it's inside of or the form of whatever shape it's going over the top of. So here we have a globe and water is forming to the shape of the globe because it is in motion. So the difference between the water leveling off flat in a standing water situation and a vessel where it's being held, the water levels off flat here and on top of the globe, the water has to be in motion for that to happen. So water isn't standing water. It's not standing there in this position. Let's just say this is the, you know, the, the Gulf of Mexico right here or the Atlantic Ocean, you know, right here. The water is, isn't on this example, is not just sitting there. It's sliding off, obviously, right? So if, we, if I was on a ship right here, I'd be getting thrown around, around the globe. Okay, hold on. I got you. I got you. I got your rebuttal, your gravity, right? So let's just pretend gravity is pulling everything to the center of this globe and gravity is holding all of this water into its position. Let's pretend that's a real thing. If that's true, then I should be able to observe from orbit from the ISS, I should be able to observe this curve of water you get that the water should curve like this over a ball and obviously you can see how fast it's going over the ball so obviously our oceans aren't doing this so the size comparison of this globe to the earth at 25,000 miles in circumference uh, the earth would be shooting the water so fast that it would be covering the continents. We would constantly be having tsunamis over every continent if it was doing that. So we'd all be drowning in water, essentially. So they conveniently turned off the globe water experiment right after I was done talking about it. So um, pretty awesome that happened. So here we go, we got flat water. So this water here levels off flat. In every vessel, every container that ever existed, on the face of the earth, in history and time, whether it is a 
glass, a bowl, a bathtub, a swimming pool, a lake, or an ocean, water levels off at the top. At no point in the history of the natural physics of water does the top of the water from this point to this point curve. At no point does the water bulge on the top like you see here because that's called a bulge of water. You've got a vessel container holding this water in like so even if it was a globe you'd have a like a deep trench or a valley holding this water in the water would still have to level off flat from there to there so regardless if your gravity theory is pulling it all in you'd still have to observe a curve like that and you don't do that so laser experiments disprove the globe this water alone disproves the globe you pour water into a cup it becomes the cup you pour water into a teapot it becomes the teapot you pour water into a fountain it becomes the fountain you until the water goes over the vessel and it then falls down the water has now fallen down and taking whatever its shape while it's in midair so we're not talking about water that's in midair, water that's going around the exterior of an object in motion. We're not talking about surface tension that you get when you're holding a glass of water and there's a tad bit of surface tension on the top. We are not talking about that. I'm not talking about the curve of a droplet of water. We're talking about tens of thousands of gallons of ocean water spanning from one coastline to the next coastline. You take a laser from this end to that end, you will measure the very top of this water as flat and level. You take a laser from this end to the other end, same way. No matter what coastline you are, no matter what lake, the Great Lake of Michigan, from Michigan you can visually see the Sears Tower and the Chicago skyline. That is the instant globe destroyer right there. This is a fact. It is not a mirage, it is not an illusion. You can visually see across the Great Lakes from Michigan to Chicago. How, if we are living on a ball, can I see from one end of the lake all the way to the other end, or the ocean, you know, if, if it's a ball? A ball has a drop, so we would be on top of this ball, looking out, straight out, so we'll use that building as reference. If I'm on the ball looking straight out, my horizon is this. That's the horizon line. It is not a curve horizon. Everything that we see on this flat plane is visual, visible with our eyes. And the fact that you can see the islands of Hawaii from the other island of Hawaii, a hundred miles away, is observable evidence that we are not on a globe. So globe defenders, the ball is no longer in your court, all right? You cannot ever prove in a demonstrable experiment, you cannot demonstrate standing water inside of a vessel bulging on the top. It does not ever do that. It will not ever do that. Water is flat. Therefore, the Earth is 70% flat level water. You've officially been deglumped, debunked, globe, globe gobblers. The argument is over. Your argument is invalid because you have no observable evidence. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned, and we'll see you back next time.